Omar, president and founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association practice the Buddhist teachings as taught by the 13th century Japanese Buddhist sage Nichiren Shonen. It is Nichiren Shonen who teaches us that it is the Lotus Sutra that is the highest of the Buddhist teachings. One thing that you should understand about the Buddhist religion is that in the first century AD, a new Buddhism emerged, whereas Buddhism became separated by race, culture, and language. The new Buddhism is characterized by the language of Sanskrit. Now, Sanskrit is a language whereas all of the black culture, history, has been extricated out of the Buddhist teachings. Now, the new Buddhism that emerged in the first century AD is called Mahayana Buddhism. Whenever you read about Mahayana Buddhism, you can be assured that all black history, culture, and language has been extricated out of the Buddhist religion. You will not know anything about black people or how Buddhism was in Africa because Mahayana Buddhism took all of this out of Buddhism. Mahayana Buddhism is the time when the Buddha was changed from black to white. Now, let me share with you evidence of when the Buddha changed from black to white. During the time of the Kushan dynasty, this is about the first century AD, a white king, his name was Kanishka, a white king by the name of Kanishka had conquered India. And they had this Buddhist who was a Brahmin originally, and he convinced King Kanishka, Kanishka to take up the Buddhist religion. The Brahman who became a Buddhist name was Ashvagosha. And Ashvagosha convinced King Kanishka to take on the Buddhist religion because Buddhism at the time of the first century had been completely obliterated out of the Buddhist, uh, out of India because the Brahmins had taken over and they had started this Hindu cult and they killed all the Buddhism. Well, it was Ashwagosha who got with King Kanishka and they introduced this new Buddhism called Mahayana Buddhism. Of course, I want you to look at pictures of the Gandhara carvings. See, when King Kanishka took on the Buddhist religion, what he did was he made the images to look more like himself because he was of the Greek ancestry and he made the Buddha and the Bodhisattvas look like Greek people. I want you to take a look at this. Now, in regards to the 13th century Japanese Buddhist sage, Nichiren rejects Mahayana Buddhism. Now, Japan is a Mahayana Buddhist country. Now, in regards to the Buddhist teachings, I join the Mahayana Buddhist religion by practicing Zen Buddhism in 1970. Now in 1974, I joined a Buddhist set in America called NSA, which was an acronym for Nichiren Shoshu of America. NSA later became the SGI and the lay organization started this I joined NSA. I have changed there was my views of society. SGI on one hand, and that was Nichiren Choshu. Now, through my Buddhist study, I learned the black history of Buddhism and that the ancient India, in ancient India, the people were called Naga. Some of them called the dead, they're known as Dravidians, they're known as Gallops, but originally India was called Eastern Ethiopia. Now, the kingdom where the Buddha was born is called Magadha. Magadha was founded by a black king, and his name was Sisu Naga. 
After Sisu Naga, we read about Buddhism, about Ben Basara. Ben Basara was a contemporary of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Now, those of you who are learning Buddhism from the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, I would like for you to Google a book. It's a free book that's online. It's called The Journal of the Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland. Please understand that the Buddhist religion has a history of racism and that all of the black history, culture, and language has been extricated from the Buddhist religion. In my personal case, I was a member of the SGI slash NSA Buddhist set, and when I inquired about the Black Buddhist history, I went against the SGI leader, Dasaki Kato, who wrote in his book, it's called The Living Buddha. In the book, The Living Buddha, Dasaki Kato writes that the Buddha came from an Indo-Aryan cultural spirit. Now, by my understanding the history and the black Buddhist uh, history, I could no longer stay with the SGI Buddhist set and I could no longer go along with the lie and a misrepresentation of Buddhism. So I left the SGI. I wrote a letter to the SGI in March of 1991 and I could no longer take it because I wanted to see the black Buddhist history to be inclusive of our Buddhist teachings. And of course, I, uh, in, from 1981 until 1996, for five years, I practiced by myself until, until a friend of mine by the name of Shaka Kalfani, who we're going to talk more about in this lecture. Shaka worked for Northwest Airlines and he had went on what is called Tozan at the Nichiren Shoshu Temple in Taiseki, Japan. And Chaka owed me some money, so in order to pay me back, and I will be a friend and by introducing him to Buddhism, Chaka arranged for me to go to Tozan. And when I went to Tozan, I was very skeptical of what was going on because I had realized that these people had taken away all the black history, all the black culture, all the black language from Buddhism. So when I went to Japan, I took a professional video camera and a laptop computer. So instead of going to Japanese, Japan, like everyone else who's going on Tozan, I went as a documentary filmmaker. In fact, I recorded more English-speaking people at Taisekiji, Japan than anybody in the history of Nichiren Shoshu Buddhism and that I talked to everybody. I had, I actually recorded three high priests. I was given access to the temple at Taisekiji so I was able to study and learn and get a clearer and a more intense and in-depth understanding of Nichiren Shoshu. Now, in 1998, I had the opportunity to, to travel to Accra, Ghana for the opening of the first Nichiren Shoshu temple in Africa. And I was of the opinion that Nichiren Shoshu was a fair Buddhist sect and that we would have a teaching that was inclusive of our black history, culture, and language. And what had happened was the Buddhist in Accra, Ghana, that SGI leader Dasaki Keita had did a coup and that what he wanted to do is that he get you to start the Buddhist practice off but what he wanted to do was teach you about an Akeda consciousness. So he got rid of all the black leaders in America. And in Ghana, there was a man by the name of Joseph Asamani, who was the only black general director in the SGI. 
And we all knew about Joseph Asamani, but what happened was that Saki Kato tried to get rid of him and replace him with, a, with the Japanese, and the people in Ghana fought. And what happened was for five years, no one knew what happened to Joseph Asamani because the people in Ghana had broken off. And the priesthood found out about the people in Ghana, they had broken away from, from Dasaki Kega, they had broken away from the SGI, and they were practicing independently. Well, the priesthood came in, they gave them money, and they took that money and built the largest temple outside of Japan in the world. They built the largest Nichiren Shoshu temple. So in 1998, I had the opportunity to go to Ghana for the first Nichiren Shoshu temple opening. Now, not only did I have the opportunity to go to Ghana, I was selected as the official videographer. So Nichiren Shoshu gave me total and unabated access to filming and talking and learning. So I got a knowledge and I got a background that was unprecedented because I was the official videographer for the first opening of the first Nichiren Shoshu Temple in Africa. Now, what happened was the SGI had this big fight and they were going back and forth and I wrote the members in America to tell them what Daisaki Kato had done to the African people. And I documented and I recorded. Now what happened was, the people or the members in America, especially my father, his name, my Buddhist father, his name was Mr. Joseph Thomas. I sent Mr. Thomas a video of what was going on in Africa and I wanted him to see and I sent videos to all the members in Memphis to show them what Dasao Kikeda had done and the racism that he was doing. And of course, Mr. Thomas sent me the video back. He wouldn't accept it. And a lot of the members were closed-minded. They did not want to know what Dasao Kikeda did. So, there was this white guy. His name was Craig Bratcher, who practiced in Chicago. And Craig was an engineer and he could read dolls and he understood dolls. And this is like back in 1998, he was a internet guy who understood how the internet worked and things were different. So, I sent Craig Bratcher this video and told him what I was trying to do. And he helped me to develop a website. And I felt I developed a website called The Proud Black Booty. And I had this website that I started in 1998. And what happened was because I had a website and because I had a Proud Black Rooters website, I could now tell a black side of Buddhism. And through my study of understanding the black history and the black culture, I was able to write more about black Buddhist history than any person in the world. In fact, if you Google the name Black Buddhist, it is Anthony Elmore who comes up the first person on the Google search engine because we were out there years ago doing all the Buddhist study and, and history. Now what happened was, by my going out and my telling the story and my having a Black Buddhist website, I had no idea that Japanese did not like a black man who was independent and free. The thing that they would ask me is that, did you get permission from the priests to have this website to tell these stories because they wanted you to be controlled? Well. The priest at Nichiren Choshu did not say anything to me about my website, but what they did was they quietly got behind my back and they told the members in Memphis, Tennessee, don't associate with Anthony Elmore. So what has happened was from 1998 
and the time I did this website, and we go on to the new millennium, and there I am at Japan, and everybody is like mad at me. They got this guy by the name of Tony. Tony was a New York Nitrin Shoshu member, and Tony was upset. In fact, I showed Tony on the website, and Tony was saying anything that was not of the priest was not real. So you had this culture in Buddhism, Whereas the African Americans in Nitrin Shoshu did not like me because I had a website, I was not sanctioned by the priests, and for years I could write and I can tell the story. But what would happen was, in fact, in 2003, I was at Taisekiji, Japan, and Tony got together with this priest from San Francisco. His name was Reverend Takahashi, and Reverend Takahashi and Tony came up to me at the at the temple at Tasekiji, and Reverend Takahashi says, "I want to know about this website, and who gave you permission to have a website?" I looked at that little sucker and I told him, "I said, wait a minute. I am an American. I'm no Japanese. I practice religion because we have freedom of religion." And I don't need no permission to have a website. I'm an American. And I have religious freedom. And you better get out my face because I know Japanese culture and history. In fact, you got no business talking to me because you're not my priest. But since you bring the subject up about my website, I want to go to the Nitrin Shoshu office. Since we're at the head temple, Let's go to the overseas bureau and let's discuss some of this racism and let's discuss the idea of making black history and culture inclusive of our Buddhist teachings. That little sucker looked at me and he dropped his head. I said, I dare you. I said, let's go. I said, Reverend Obiashi, he's the overseas bureau chief. Let's go talk. This guy was so cowardly. But what they did was, those priests put out an unwritten story that no one was to associate with me. So, we come to the time that the priests isolated me in Nichiren Shoshu Buddhism. There I was practicing, dedicated, had my website, I'm challenging SGI members for racism and and but what happened was the S the Nitrin Shoshu, they did what the SGI couldn't do. They come in under the auspices of a religious organization and they got rid of Mr. Joseph Asamani because they were priests and they got rid of him and nobody would challenge these Nitrin Shoshu priests. Now, in 2006, I married an Ethiopian woman and I brought her to the temple in Ghana and when I took her to America and we would go to Buddhist meetings and for from 2006 up until for four or five years the meetings were horrible because I was trying to get the members to make our black culture and our history inclusive of Buddhism and the members were told by the priests don't associate with me. So every idea that I had, they had, they were working behind the scenes to destroy all the things that I was doing, and it was a horrible situation. The meetings were horrible, and it was not until about 2012 when Nitrin Shoshu priest Reverend Shinji Iwaki came to my home. And he stood, he stood right here in front of this altar and he says, let's leave culture out of Buddhism, no more culture. Man, I looked at that little sucker, I said, wait a minute. Here you are, want me to have Japanese culture, Japanese history, Japanese language, but yet you don't want me to make Black culture inclusive 
of our Buddhist practice. At that time, in 2012, I made a decision that I would leave the Nichiren Show Shoe religion. Now, at the time, my friend Shaka Kalafani had joined Nichiren Shoe. So, I contacted Shaka, I said, I'd like to know more about Nichiren Shoe. And I had people who the Nichiren Choshu had turned down, who discriminated against because they didn't want me to be successful. So I went to meetings at Chakra House, and you see me at the Buddhist meetings at Chakra House. And I told Shaka, I said, Shaka, let's get this thing going, and we're going to call this thing the Proud Memphis Proud Black Buddhist. And Shaka had agreed to it. Now, but what happened was, Shaka is a member of the Nitrin Shoe Temple in Houston, Texas. And Shaka, the woman who is the head priest, was the first African American Nitrin Shoe, Nitrin priest in the world. And she, her name was Mukay Shonen. And Mukay Shonen got with Shaka and says, Man, you guys, we can't be having no religion, talking about no proud black. Memphis proud black Buddhist, we cannot do this. See, what I didn't realize was Nichiren Shu, like Nichiren Choshu, and like the SGI, they are Mahayana Buddhists and they practice the Sanskrit teachings that educate all black history, culture, and language from Buddhism. So on November of 19 of 2013, I wrote a letter to the Nitrin Shoshu heads and I asked them what was their policy regarding African Americans. And when I wrote that letter to the Nitrin Shoshu heads, Shaka got mad and he wrote me a nasty letter. Shaka called me a terrorist and he called me a terrorist and he said I was no longer welcome at his house anymore. And this Muke Shonen, who was his priest, Shaka and I were the best friends. The man was like a brother to me. Shaka was an independent trucker. And when he, when I borrowed money on my house, I borrowed a hundred thousand dollars on my house. I told Shaka, I said, man, I got money you a trucker, I loaned that man $10,000 to, to buy his own tractor trailer truck so he could be an independent business guy. He was a guy who lived in my house, a man who I loved so much as a brother. We traveled all over the world together. But Shaka followed this half Japanese woman by the name of Muke Shonen. And Muke Shonen had, and the way that they teach Nichiren Shu Buddhism, Shaka said was no longer welcome in his house. And there I was, ladies and gentlemen. And this is November 2013. And I had to make a big decision. Now, this decision that I made comes in line with the topic of my Buddhist lecture today. My Buddhist lecture today is called Finding God in Buddhism. That is my lecture. Finding God in Buddhism. Because in 2013, when my friend and my brother, who I love so much, we had traveled the world, we did kickboxing together. When he turned his back and said, I was no longer welcome at his house anymore, the members of Nitrin Shoshu Buddhism had all turned their back on me because the Nitrin Shoshu priest told them, do not associate with me. There I was, Nitrin Shoshu, Nitrin Shu, and the SGI. I really did not have a Buddhist friend in the world. I was trying to get the priest to honor Dr. Martin Luther King. Let's make our Buddhist practice 
inclusive of our black history, our culture, and our language. But what happened was, everybody associated with the Japanese and they turned their backs on it. Now, there are the horrors a Buddhist associated with the Japanese sense in that they take black people and they make them attenuate the culture, the history, and the language. And these people become robots and they are no longer active in their community, but they become a part of Japanese cultural imperialism. But, let's get to my title. It's called Finding God in Buddhism. What had happened, ladies and gentlemen, that I had nowhere to go. But Shaka had wrote this letter to me. And I was trying to help this woman in Zambia who wanted to get a Gohanzan, who wanted to learn. And Shaka says, you can help this woman with your almighty website. And what happened was, even though I had nobody, the one thing that I had, and this is how my topic is called, Finding God in Buddhism. What had happened, ladies and gentlemen, is that in 1998, when I started the Proud Black Buddhist website, a new culture, a new entity had emerged a new, what we call an insentient being called the internet had emerged. And what happened was, I became the number one Buddhist, black Buddhist in the world. In all of our world, ladies and gentlemen, there is not one independent black Buddhist set in the world. And so, the only person that really, who was a Buddhist, who was independent, was Anthony Elmore. So in January of 2014, because I had what was called the Proud Black Buddhist website, I had what is called an agorism. That was, now that we had computers, and everybody's computer is a cell phone, and when you Google Proud Black Buddhist, there's Anthony M. Elmore, the number one Buddhist in the world. So what that told me was, now my topic is finding God in Buddhism. Well, God was with me in that I was given the task and the honor of being able to teach people Buddhism. And God was right there in that I was given the Proud Black Buddha's website. So in January of 2014, I launched an organization called the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. And today, we're going to get into my lecture. It's called Finding God in Buddhism. That I found God in Buddhism when I left the Japanese nutrient sets of the SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, and Nichiren Shu. Now, in the Gosho, that is the teachings of Nichiren Shonen, of the writers of Nichiren Shonen, there is a Gosho called the Damoku of the Lotus Sutra. Now, this is how you find God in Buddhism. See, you find God in the mystic Kyo. Kyo is the teachings of the Buddha. In the Gosho, called the Dhammoko Oloto Sutra, it reads, quote, Within the single character Kyo are contained all the sutras in the worlds throughout the ten directions. It is like a wish granting jewel that contains within it all manner of treasures or the vastness of space that encompasses all phenomena. And because this single character guilt 
of your holding gate Calvary is the supreme achievement of the Buddha's lifetime of teachings. The other four characters, Nyo Ho Rin Gate, likewise surpass all the other 80,000 doctrines that the Buddha taught. Unquote. You see, we write that you find God in the teachings of Buddhism or in the mystic Kyo. It was Nichiren Shonen who teach that the essence of the Buddhist teachings is the Lotus Sutra and the essence of the Lotus Sutra is in the title. The title of the Lotus Sutra is Nyo Ho Renge Kyo. The Kyo or mystic Kyo is the teaching of not only the Buddha, but the mystic Kyo is all of the teachings of the universe. Now, in the Go Show, the gift of rights, it reads, quote, the true had lies in the affairs of this world. The Golden Light Sutra states, quote, to have a profound knowledge of this world is itself Buddhism. The Nirvana Sutra states, quote, all of the non-Buddhist scriptures and writings in society are themselves Buddhist teachings and not non-Buddhist teachings, unquote. Now, the, this is what the famous astrophysicist Albert Einstein writes. Quote, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious, the knowledge of the existence of something unfathomable to us, the manifestation of the most profound reason coupled with the most brilliant beauty. I cannot imagine but he said the most brilliant beauty. I cannot imagine us. Let me go it again. The most beautiful thing to us we can experience is the mysterious. The knowledge of the existence of something unfathomable to us. The manifestation of the most profound reason coupled with the most brilliant beauty. I cannot imagine a God who rewards and punishes the objects of his creation or who has a will of a kind we experience in ourselves. I am satisfied with the mystery of life's eternity and with the awareness of and glimpse into the marvelous construction of the existing world together with the steadfast determination to comprehend a portion, be it ever so tiny, of the reason that manifests itself in nature. This is the basic cosmic religiosity, and it appears to me the most important function of art and science is to reckon this feeling among the receptive and keep it alive. Unquote. Now, we at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association deal in the concept of God. We approach God from the mystic Kyo or science or Buddhist teachings. Dr. Erwin Einstein writes, quote, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious we proud black Buddhists chant the Damoko, a title of the Lotus Sutra, which is Yo Ho Ren Ge Cho. The meaning of Myo is mysterious. Myo also means unfathomable. Myo means correct. It also means wonderful. 
Yo also means cause. Now, the word ho means effect or manifestations or workings of the law. The law or ho manifests 3,000 realms or the mutually inclusive relationship of life and all phenomena. If we read what Dr. Albert Einstein wrote in our understanding and explanation of God, we come to the same conclusion. Now, the goal show the real aspect of the Gohanzan reads, quote, to have faith is the basis of Buddhism. Thus the fourth volume of great concentration and insight states, quote, Buddhism is like an ocean that one can only enter with faith. The fourth volume of the annotations on great concentration and insight explains this, quote, with regard to the phrase, Buddhism is like an ocean that one can only enter with faith. Even Confucius taught that faith is first and foremost. Now, it goes on further. It says, how much more so true is the profound doctrines of Buddhism? Without faith, how could one possibly enter? That is why the flower garden defines faith as the basis of the way and the mother of blessings. It goes on further. The first volume of concentration and insight says, quote, how does one hear, believe in, and practice the perfect teachings to attain perfect enlightenment. The first volume on great concentration and insight says, quote, to believe in the perfect teachings means to awaken faith through doctrine and to make faith the basis of practice. You see, this is the point that we are making. How does one learn about what we call God and gain this faith? Buddhism teaches us that we gain faith through doctrine and make faith the basis of practice. See, let us get back to our topic, finding God in Buddhism. The only way that we can find God is through faith. And the way we gain faith is through doctrine. What is this doctrine where we learn about God? We learn about God through practicing the Lotus Sutra. We learn about the Lotus Sutra through studying the title. We learn about the title through studying the ghost show. Now, let me explain this in simple, secular terms. In 1974, when I first began to chant Namu Myoho Renge Kyo, I found what I understand today as God each and every time I get in front of this altar and I chant Namu Myoho Renge Kyo, I find God. See. The ghost show, true aspect of phenomena reads, one becomes a votary of the Lotus Sutra by virtue of one's practices and past existences. It is karmic relationships that determine which among the many trees are made into images of the Buddha. It is also because of karma that some become statues of Buddhas of provisional teachings, unquote. You see, 
The idea that we can find God in Buddhism is because of our common relationship to the Buddhist teachings. You see, the 15th chapter of the Lotus Sutra, it is written about Buddhists who emerged from the earth called Bodhisattvas of the earth. The Bodhisattvas of the earth goal is to change the world. Now, the goal show, Three Kinds of Treasure, reads, quote, the heart of the Buddha's lifetime of teachings is the Lotus Sutra. And the heart of the practice of the Lotus Sutra is found in the never disparaging chapter. What does Buddha Sava never disparaging profound respect for people signify? The purpose of the appearance in this world Shakyamuni Buddha, the Lord of the teachings, lies in his behavior as a human being. Again, the purpose of the appearance in this world of Shakyamuni Buddha, the Lord of the teachings, lies in his behavior as a human being. See, the Buddhist faith is not some Asian monk on some mountain meditating, no, it is about some SGI member bragging about chanting one million damoku, nor is the Buddhist faith about any priest wearing a shaved head and giving the appearance of being a an holy and upright person. The Buddha Shakyamuni, the Lord of the Tendons, made his purpose by showing his behavior as a human being. The behavior of a Buddha is not expressing the behavior of a Buddha. The way to see a Buddha is via his expression as a Bodhisattva. At the time of this lecture, we see Charlotte, North Carolina, individuals coming out protesting the killing of Keith Scott. Then, a Bodhisattva is not going to an SGI meeting singing a song called Sensei telling Daisaki Kata how great he is. No, being a Bodhisattva is traveling 1,000 miles to Taisekiji, Japan to see a multi-million dollar Nichiren Shoshu Buddhist temple where we see a perverted ostentation of Buddhist faith. When we look at the records most, of most Buddhists, we see no Bodhisattva action in real life. Instead, we see those at Nichiren Shoshu, we see a perversion of those traveling a thousand miles to see a piece of careful wood. Now, let us move to San Francisco 49ers quarterback Craig who protests and refuse to stand for the national anthem as long as mainly white police officers unjustly kill black men in America. Let us look back to our lecture Finding God in Buddhism. The purpose of the Buddhist advent is to show his behavior as a human being. It was Shakyamuni Buddha who first intoned Myoho Renge Kyo, Nichiren writes in the opening of the art images, in the opening of the eyes of images, Nichiren writes, the mind represents the spiritual aspect and the voice the physical aspect. The spiritual aspect manifests itself in the physical. A person can know another's mind by listening to his voice. This is, is because the physical aspect represents the spiritual aspect. The physical and the spiritual which are one in essence manifest themselves as two distinct aspects. Thus, the Buddha's mind found expression as words of the Lotus Sutra. 
These written words are the Buddha's mind in a different form. Therefore, those who read the Lotus Sutra must not regard it as consistent of mere words, for those words are in themselves the Buddha's mind. It is the Lotus Sutra that teaches us that all phenomena manifest 3,000 worlds in a momentary state of existence. The spiritual manifest in a physical, act, physical aspect. The way to find God in Buddhism is tapping the mind via faith in the Lotus Sutra. When we tap the Buddha's mind, we find the mind or spirit of God. What is the Spirit of God? The Spirit of God is an enlightened life condition. What is the opposite of the Spirit of God? The opposite of the Spirit of God is delusion. This is how the Gosho on attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime explains it. Quote, When deluded, one is called an ordinary being, but when enlightened, one is called a Buddha. This is similar to a tarnished mirror that will shine like a jewel when polished. A mind now clouded by the illusions of innate darkness of life is like a tarnished mirror, but when polished, it is sure to become like a clear mirror reflecting the central nature of phenomena or the true aspect of reality." Unquote. Let me explain the Spirit of God it is an enlightened life condition. When people are enlightened, their actions reflect the Spirit of God. However, when deluded, one reflects the spirit of an ordinary being. Let me explain this in relationship to Buddhist history, culture, and language. I challenge you to examine the Buddhist religion. In our entire world, you will not find a single African American or black Buddhist independent sect other than us. In regard to the Japanese nutrient sets, in regard to most Buddhism worldwide, you will find a consciousness in a concerted effort to extricate all black Buddhist history, culture, and language. Moreover, you will find not in Buddhism a single black Buddhist voice. We call this condition delusion. For example, if I was a member of the SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, Nichiren Shu, or some of the other Buddhist sects who are controlled by agents, I would not be able to teach or include black Buddhist history. What you have in the Buddhist faith is what Nichiren calls a mind clouded by illusions of innate darkness, or a mind not of God or an enlightened, or an enlightened life condition. Let me bring you to just a few days ago, September the 24th, 2016. We find the opening of the African American Museum. I want you to listen to President Obama explain the purpose and importance of the museum. You see, let's first of all listen to President Obama explain about the American, the African American History Museum. Hi everybody. This weekend we'll dedicate the newest American icon on our National Mall. 
the National Museum of African American History and Culture. It's a beautiful building, five stories high and some 70 feet below the ground, situated just across the street from the Washington Monument. And this museum tells a story of America that hasn't always taken a front seat in our national narrative. As a people, we've rightfully passed on the tales of the giants who built this country, but too often, willful or not, we've chosen to gloss over or ignore entirely the experience of millions upon millions of others. But this museum chooses to tell a fuller story. It doesn't gauze up some bygone era or avoid uncomfortable truths. Rather, it embraces the patriotic recognition that America is a constant work in progress, that each successive generation can look upon our imperfections and decide that it is within our collective power to align this nation with the high ideals of our founding. That's what you'll see inside. You'll see it in the shackles of an enslaved child and in the hope of Harriet Tubman's gospel hymnal. You'll see it in the tragedy of Emmett Till's coffin and in the resilience of a lunch counter stool and the triumph of a Tuskegee airplane. You'll see it in the shadow of prison guard tower and in the defiance of Jesse Owens' cleats and the American pride of Colin Powell's uniform. All of that isn't simply the African-American story. It's part of the American story. And so it is entirely fitting that we tell this story on our national mall, the same place we tell the stories of Washington and Jefferson and our independence, the story of Lincoln who saved our union and the GIs who defended it, the story of King who summoned us all toward the mountaintop. That's what we'll celebrate, not just this weekend, but in the years and generations ahead. A fuller account of our glorious American story. It's a chance to reflect on our past and set a course for the future. Because here in this country, all of us, no matter what our station in life, have the chance to pick up the pen and write our own chapter for our time. This is what we at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association teach. We teach that the Spirit of God is our enlightened life condition. When you visit the museum, you will find the Spirit of God in that develop an enlightened life condition. Let, let us give an example just the opposite. In our American society, we have fundamental Christians, fundamental Muslims, and others who do not believe in evolution, science or equality or an enlightened state of mind that is opposed to religious tenets while we have what we call a religion or people who say they believe in God the argument of such fundamentalist religions is that God is obeying fundamental religious laws whereas we in the Buddhist faith Honoring the Lotus Sutra explains that God is our enlightened life condition. Our subject is finding God in Buddhism. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association chant the words Namo Milhoringe Ko. The word Namo is a Pali, a black word that comes from Namo. Namo means to awaken. It means to give reverence. It also means to evoke one's life. The word Nyo is the same as God or unfindable or unexplainable or correct or wonderful. It also means to open. It also means a cause. Now, we explain the word Ho. Ho means an effect or a manifestation or the 3,000 worlds in a mutually inclusive relationship a life and phenomena. There is no such thing as phenomena all alone. All phenomena is an inclusive relationship of cause and effect. Now, 
we come to the word Renge or Lotus. Now in the ghost show, entity of the mystic law, this is how it explains Renge or Lotus. Quote, therefore, there is no entity of the law outside of the metaphors and parables. And there are no metaphors and parables outside the entity of the law. In other words, the entity of the law refers to the entity of the truth of the essential nature of phenomena. While the metaphors and parables represent the entity of the mystic law as manifested in actual phenomena. The manifestations are none other than the entity of the truth. And the entity of the truth is none other than the manifestations. Therefore, it can be said that the law and its metaphors constitute a single entity. Unquote. See, in common sense terms, cause and effect, or Renge is a single law. Now, we come back to our original thesis in regards to the word Kyo or the Buddhist teachings. You will find God in the mystic Kyo or the teachings of Buddhism. What is more fascinating about the Buddhist teachings is its relationship to science, history, archaeology, anthropology, literary science, and genetic science. In order to get a clear view and understand of Buddhism, you must study Buddhism outside of what is taught from the Asians and most people who call themselves white people. See, we explained earlier that in the first century, a white Kushan king by the name of Kanishka changed the Buddha from black to white. We explained that a new Buddhism emerged called Mahayana Buddhism, whereas Buddhism became separated by race, culture, and language. The language of the new Buddhism was called Sanskrit, a language spoken by people who called themselves Aryans, now, which originally meant noble and later became associated with people known as white people. See, history, science, archaeology, anthropology, literary science teach us how the Buddhist religion and the Lola Sutra moved from India to Africa 1,000 years before Buddhism was introduced to China. It was in Africa 1400 years before it was introduced to Japan. Please understand that whites and Asians both used a concerted effort to extricate black people from the Buddhist religion and its history. We mentioned earlier about the Royal Asiatic Society of Britain and Ireland. See, it is via these writings of white scholars where you can get an accurate history of Buddhism inclusive of Africa and black people. Please understand that it was in the 1800s that these whites wrote about the true history of Buddhism inclusive of black history. It is fascinating to read the 1836 book regarding the origins of religion, history, language, and culture written by the British historian Sir Godfrey Higgins in a book called The Anaclipsis. This is what Sir Godfrey Higgins writes about Buddhism and the, the Anaclipsis. He says, quote, The time has now arrived when it becomes popular to enter upon the explanations of the doctrines 
of the celebrated Buddha of India were, which were the foundations of all the mysticies of the Western nations, unquote. See, let us be clear. All of what we understand about religion today came from the Buddhist teachings. In fact, in 29 BC, they had the fourth Buddhist council whereas they wrote down the Buddhist teachings in a work called the Pali Canon. Its work is 14 times larger than the Christian Bible. All of what we know of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam came from Buddhism. At the time of Homer, India was known as Eastern Ethiopia. It was the father of history, Herodotus. In the Anacopsis, Sir Godfrey Higgins writes, quote, Herodotus speaks of Muro as the cradle of the gymnosophists or Buddhists. Higgins writes, quote, We see here that the followers of Buddha are called gymnosophists. It has been observed that Moro of Ethiopia was Miro. That is confirmed by the observation of Heldorius and the priests of Miro were of a humane character were called gymnosophists. Unquote. See, this is a picture of the academic temple in Nubia Sudan we see the Lower Sutra in ancient Africa. In African history, we read about the Nubians. In Africa, the people who were Nubian were called Naga in India. The Naga were Buddhists. The Naga who first came to Africa from India were Jews from the tribe of Judah. When we look at pictures of Egyptians with the snake, these are the Buddhist Naga. The Naga Buddhists who came to India from India were called the Shepherd Kings or the Haikos. These black Buddhists were known of, of the tribe of Judah. They set up a kingdom in Africa called the Aksum Empire, one of the great ancient kingdoms. And their land was known in the Bible as Abyssinia. They have the oldest records of kings and queens in the history of mankind called the Kira Nagas. Nagas is from Naga. In Sudan, you have Naga Sudan. And we show you a Buddhist temple where you see the lotus flower in the Ahsoka Egg. Please understand that all black Buddhist history has been wiped away by whites and Asians. In the book, The Anarchist, is Godfrey Higgins writes, quote, Mr. Franklin says another striking instance is recorded by the very intelligent traveler Wilson regarding a representation of the fall of our first parents, sculptured in the magnificent temple of Istanbul in Nubia. He says a very exact representation of Adam and Eve in the God of Eden is to be seen in that cave and that the serpent climbing the tree is especially delineated. How is the fact that the mythos of the second book of Genesis being found in Nubia, probably a thousand miles from Helafios, to account for except that it came from Upper India with the first Buddhist of Gymnosophus, unquote. The point that we know is we have archaeological anthropological, genetic science, literary science of Buddhism in ancient Africa. The Buddhists were called gymnosophists. Gym means naked, sophists means philosopher. 
the Egyptians, Nubians, Ethiopians, and Abyssinians were Buddhists. The Buddhists were Naga, as you see in Egypt with the snake. The snake represents wisdom or Buddhism. If you look on medicine, you see wisdom. You see the snake, the Naga, the Naga or the dragon. Now, my topic is finding God in Buddhism. Please understand that we who are of the proud black Buddhist world association practice a Buddhism inclusive of God in our practice. Let me approach the concept of God from a Buddhist or the Lotus Sutra perspective. In the Go Show, on attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime reads, quote, the Lotus Sutra is the king of sutras, true and correct in both word and principle. Its words are the ultimate reality, and this reality is the mystic Kyo, Myoho. It is called mystic because it reveals the principle of the mutually inclusive relationship of a single moment of life and all phenomena. That is why this sutra is the wisdom of all Buddhas." Unquote. See, what the Lord of Sutra teach us is about the mutually inclusive relationship of a single moment of life and all phenomena. What we call God, life and all phenomena is mutually inclusive. In a practical or common sense explanation, God is not outside of your life. You can find God in an enlightened life condition. Let me put this in a practical way that you can understand. United States Senator Elizabeth Warren grills Wells Fargo Executive John Stump. Wells Fargo Bank forced over 5,000 employees to cheat customers to drive up their stock. John Stump made over $200 million in bonuses while over 5,000 people lost their $12 an hour jobs. Let us look at this video because when we look at people, you look at a guy from Wall Street who is unenlightened or delusional who go rip people off for $500 and we look at them because they look nice in a shirt and tie. And you see a black person who is get arrested and get killed just because he's black. You see, this is how our life, this is what we show in our life. Let's first of all look at Elizabeth Warren grilled this guy and I want you to see the picture of the guy who goes out and steals 200 million dollars from people who rob people. These guys at Wall Street, see we don't look at these people but see in Buddhism, Buddhism calls these people are people who are delusional because they think that they can get over by cheating other people. In Buddhism, that's illusion. Let's take a look at the video. We're going to come back and put a period on this lecture. You know, here's what really gets me about this, Mr. Stump. If one of your tellers took a handful of $20 bills out of the cash drawer, they'd probably be looking at criminal charges for theft. They could end up in prison. But you squeezed your employees to the breaking point so they would cheat customers and you could drive up the value of your stock and put hundreds of millions of dollars in your own pocket. And when it all blew up, you kept your job, you kept your multi-million dollar bonuses, and you went on television to blame thousands of $12 an hour employees who were just trying to meet cross-sell quotas that made you rich. This is about accountability. 
You should resign. You should give back the money that you took while this scam was going on, and you should be criminally investigated. Hey, Buddhism, there is a principle called the Buddha's Dharma, or the Eightfold Path. Now, following the Eightfold Path leads to God. Now, the first principle deals with wisdom. That is, the right view leads to right understanding. Number two, it leads to right intention, leads to right liberation. The next number is ethical conduct. Three is right speech, right action, right livelihood. The next is mental development. That is, right at number six, right effort. Number seven, right mindfulness. And number eight, right concentration. That is the Buddha Dharma. There is nothing greater than finding God in Buddhism. Living life and living right is the Buddhist faith. In the Gold Show, happiness in this world reads, quote, there is no true happiness for humans other than Shannon, Namu, Mihori, and Kyo. The sutra reads, quote, where living beings enjoy themselves at ease. How could this passage mean anything but boundless joy of the home? It goes on further. There is no true happiness other than upholding faith in the Lord of Sutra. This is what is meant by, quote, peace and security in their present existence and good circumstances and future existences. Though worldly troubles may arise, never let them disturb you. No one can avoid problems, not even sages or worthies, unquote. See, and finding God in Buddhism, the Lotus Sutra teaches us about the eternal Buddha who says that he is the father of the world and the father of all living beings. In the Gosho, the entity of the mystic law, it explains how God or the eternal Buddha, Buddha emerged. The Gosho reads, quote, The supreme principle, that is, the mystic law was originally without a name. When the sage was observing the principle and signing names to all things, he perceived that there is this wonderful law, Myoho, that simultaneously possessed both cause and effect, Renge. And he named it Yo Ho Renge. The, this single law, that is, Yo Ho Renge, encompasses within it all phenomena comprising the ten worlds and the three thousand realms, and is lacking in none of them. Anyone practices this law will obtain both the cause and the effect of Buddhahood simultaneously. Now, the sage practices law as his teacher and attain enlightenment and therefore he simultaneously obtain the mystic cause and the mystic effect of Buddhahood becoming the thus come one of perfect, perfect enlightenment and fully realized virtue." Unquote. You see, the Buddha explains that he emerged 100 trillion million zillion years ago. That's why they call him the eternal Buddha. Now, just as we manifest Yoho or mystic law, so does the eternal Buddha. 
when out of heart of the nitrogen sets, the SGI, nitrogen show shoe, and nitrogen shoe, with faith, I followed the Lotus Sutra. The first thing I did was to recite the Lotus Sutra in English. I was reading the Lotus Sutra where Shakyamuni, the Lord of the Dharma, teach us that he never died. In the second chapter of the Lotus Sutra, the Buddha teaches us that he used expedient means in depth just as a way of teaching. He explains in the 16th chapter, the lifespan chapter that he lived trillions and billions of years and what we call eternity, he explains that if he was around us every day, we'll become arrogant and litigious. He explains just how difficult it is to meet a Buddha. You can go a million and trillion years and never meet a Buddha, but you can meet a Buddha through chanting Namo Myoho Renge Kyo. It is explained in the Lotus Sutra that you can only see a Buddha through faith. Not only must we have faith, the only way to see a Buddha is to live and become upright, loving, and only when we are ready to see a Buddha with the cost of our lives, that's the only time you're going to see a Buddha. Like, in my life, I found God in Buddhism, but I got a long way to go. We who are Buddhists, we have the ten worlds, and we have to work on ourselves to love all human beings, to forgive all human beings. That's what Buddhism is about. And the way that we do it, or the way we become good people, is we practice and we chant Namo Myoho Renge Kyo. And we grasp the Buddha nature, and we we come to elevate ourselves, or we grow to become better people. As President Obama said on gay marriage, he says, "I am evolving." So we who practice Buddhism, we evolve to be better people. So in my life, I'm evolving. I'm not the perfect guy, but I'm evolving. And I'm evolving because I have tied into the Lotus Sutra, and I have tied into the God, and the, the way of God. And the way of God is the Lotus Sutra. I think I've said enough. I am. Anthony F. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, bringing you a lecture called Finding God and Buddhism. Thank you very much. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord of suit your way. I pray every day to do my best to practice peace and love and respect. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord of suit your way. Devotion to the mystic law and cause and effect. Teaching, I believe, and wisdom preaching. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord will suit your way. The Lord will suit you. Makes a lot of sense. It's about self development and enlightenment. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord will suit your way. The way that I pray, overcome my sins. I say the Lord's title again and again. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord will suit your way. 
way the Lord of Sutra has the test. The Lord of Sutra brings me happiness. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord of Sutra way. Falling in the Lord of Sutra, I start to sing. I sing so loud, I start to scream. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. And I pray the Lord of Sutra way. I don't pray like my Eastern brother. I pray and sing with my own culture. I get down on my knees. And I pray, Lord, to suit your way. I pray the way that I feel. I pray the black way, and I start to squeal. Get out of my knees, and I pray every day. And I pray, Lord, to suit your way. There's one thing. You must know about me. I get like the church folk and I get happy. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. And I pray, Lord, to suit your way. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. And I pray, and I pray. I I pray, the Lord is I pray.